Well, hello there, First Presbyterian Church. This is another of our outreach partner interviews. And this month, in the month of March, I am proud to introduce Tim Cole. Tim Cole is the director of STEP, which is our brand new partner over in the Gilpin Court community. Uh, STEP has been around for many years. I'm sure Tim will tell us all about it, doing wonderful ministry with children and adults in Gilpin Court, from reading programs and after school tutoring all the way through job training for adults. Um, and it is just a wonderful ministry that I know First Presbyterian Church is really excited about partnering with for the next three years and learning all about the different ways we can be together in ministry. So Tim, welcome to uh, this interview. So glad to be with you today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Great. So as always, my first question is this, what's your elevator pitch? Tell us about STEP. That's, that's, that's a cold, hard question for a guy who doesn't speak short on anything, you know? Um, and I do want to just quickly say thank you. Uh, thank you to the church there at First Pres. Uh, you all have supported us for quite a long time, and I'm so excited this year to have uh, sort of a, an emphasis, emphasis on really uh, endeavoring to work together a little bit more. Uh, have already enjoyed that um, and look forward to more of that. Um, as you said, Step has been working in the Gilpin Court community since 1983, um, so it's been Somebody do math for me right now. It's been it's been some years, um, and uh, <laughs> I have been there personally since 1997. Uh, joined on uh, with Step uh, during welfare reform uh, as the employment specialist of our jobs program, which is now called Jobs for Life. But uh, to answer your question about our tagline or our elevator pitch. Uh, STEP was really established um, to be a bridge ministry, bringing together, um, specifically at the time, uh, the suburban church, mm -hmm. or we might say the resource church, together with people in need in the urban community, and uh, really looking to take the gifts, the vision, the skills of both of these peoples and, 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 and generate a, a mutually beneficial outcome that breaks uh, the bonds of poverty in uh, spiritual ways and in, in physical ways. And, and I would really include that both for me myself as a member of the church and for the individual we serve, uh, because it's just such an enriching uh, opportunity for us to have this, this sort of um, really cross-cultural um, opportunity. Right, so, right. That's, yeah. great. That's great. I, I, I really love what you, first off, you've been around for almost, you know, since 1983, that's a long, that's 38 years. That's almost 40 years. That's really, uh, that's, that's really amazing. And then to serve a, a community in our city that is so often forgotten. You know, the Gilpin Court community is, is tucked away over there off Chamberlain Avenue. And it is, is really, um, you know, we so often forget about it. So I'm, I'm so grateful to, for all that you do and, and how you are so engaged and, and in cross-cultural ways and ways that transcend, um, you know, race and class and any number of things. And that truly bring us together to be the body of Christ, to, you know, to, to do the work of the Christian church together. I, I, I love that part of, of what STEP does and all that you've done in the community for, for so long. Tim, what does partnership mean to you? Um, when I first uh, hear that question, one of the things that pops to mind for me is the memory of an earlier day when I was with STEP um, years ago. Uh, working with one of our community partners who I love dearly. I mean, these are probably some of the most important people in my life. And um, at the time, I was a little frustrated because as uh, this, this individual was running program for us, mm -hmm. I would find that she wasn't uh, engaging the volunteer maybe as much as I had hoped that the, guy, the volunteer would be engaged. And we, we, we definitely see that as a very important thing even at this, this time and, and hope to make opportunities for um, volunteers to come serve with STEP to be very accessible. Um, but one thing I noticed about this, and this is my, my friend, Sister Wilson, Della Wilson, um, I, I realized in some time that Della never sort of looked over at the person next to her who was on this front line in the fight, but we were locking arms and we we're going forward toward that goal. And I realized, you know, she was, she was focused on the goal. Right. She was focused on the goal. Mm -hmm. And that didn't mean that I was being ignored. Right. But that we're walking together in that. And it really right. sort of was a picture of partnership that just came into my mind immediately when right. I heard the question. Um, another thing that sort of struck me was some time ago, uh, probably, I don't know, 20 years ago, I don't remember, uh, my wife and I had the opportunity to go for an anniversary weekend 
we were at Hershey, Pennsylvania. And after this meal, they gave us this little card, a little Polaroid of us or whatever, you know. And uh, on it was a quote. And it, it said something to the extent that to love is not to simply gaze into one another's eyes, right. but to look outward in the same direction together. And I think that, that there's something about that partnership that's captured there. So really for us just to have a common a common goal and a common um, foundation behind that goal as we as we reach out so right. yeah. wow that I, I those are two wonderful images for partnership um i i love the idea of, of maybe not necessarily looking to your left or to your right but looking forward together for the common goal that is that is you know that is um uh, what it means to be church you know there are so many differences that divide the church across so many different spectrums of ideology or theology or however you want to say it but we are all looking towards that common goal, and that is to serve the world God loves to the glory of God through the person that we know to be God on earth and the person of Jesus. That I mean, that that is that's truly striking to me, and I so appreciate you lifting that up. And then also to really look outwards from a posture rooted in love. That that is, you know, that's the heart of it. That is what we learn um, in Scripture, but it's also how what we practice and do in ministry together. So I, that is that is that's really you know two striking images. I thank you for that. That's, I'm going to carry those with me. Last question. Tell us a story about how your ministry at Step or has impacted the life of another person. This is a hard one <laughs> because it's another person. Um, our work uh, in general, per, currently, I would say sort of our flagship ministries of, of Step are our after school program, the Victory Reading Program and also the Jobs for Life program. So we're working both with adults and children. And I, I tend to move toward the adults for these answers a little bit more because they are more autonomous beings and you can sort of see the result of your work sometimes more clearly with them. But in both cases, I think that we see all kinds of really exciting uh, gains. And so as I thought about that, um, I just, you know, I had about 10 people just jump to mind immediately with the jobs program. And, and I would start that as one person, one, one person, 10 people with different names, different people, but it always starts the same way. Um, next week, we'll go out and put out flyers for the program and people will call usually very immediately. We try to do this very close to the program so we can catch them as this has been inspired in them to make that call and they will come in. And uh, inevitably, we'll come downcast, we'll come with lifeless eyes, right. we'll come, um, you know, just putting their vest on for us for an interview for the program. Uh, but by the end of that program, I mean, I can't tell you how many times people have literally, I am a complete stranger, they walk into my office and just break down in tears and pour their heart out before you. Um, I, I remember my, my friend Mona, who wasn't who I was going to share with you about, but Mona was one of these. And uh, I just, you know, it's, it's just such a, a privilege to be a part of that when somebody's just that open with you yeah. and, and to know that there's a real call here for us to work together. Um, Mona came and said, look, Mr. Tim, that's what she calls me, Mr. Tim. Um, she said, look at, she said, look, I, I've always worked. I've always worked and I need to work and I can't find a job. Mm -hmm. And she was just depressed. And, um, Mona ended up coming through our program together with another lady named Shakina. And the two of them um, were just the life of, of the program. But in the end of the semester, Mona had a, obtained a job. Um, and within a month or so, she, she got her job at um, Mama Jay's, which I think is a fairly well-known soul food establishment here in the city of Richmond. Within a month, she was a um, a manager and a catering manager there. She's since gone on. She's over at Terrence. And I think a lot of people will know Terrence on Broad Street. She loves to cook. She's gifted at cooking. And this is a really kind of a great picture of the jobs for life because we really celebrate the fact that God has given us gifts to care for ourselves and for, for our family to bring him glory. And, um, and that's really what that program's about is establishing, uh, as, at least for those who don't yet have it, uh, the understanding that I am I'm created on purpose. Uh, by a purposeful God right. who loves me and who has given me gifts to really, um, as I say, to take care of me and my family, uh, but also to bring glory to his name. So I want to share one, one story about the kids. 
um, frequently seeing things there too, but again, in smaller bits and bites and like, what is this and what's that? Uh, a couple of years ago, probably two years ago, we had a young, a young man named Jarvis come uh, with a friend who lives in the north side uh, to our VBS. And uh, so Jarvis, he doesn't have a father in the home. You know, uh, I think he lives with his grandmother, actually. And uh, Jarvis is about seven years old. The last day on the way home from VBS, uh, Jarvis was in the car with my friend Becky and her kids, and he had a picture that we had given the kids of uh, their team. So they had their counselors and the children, and he was kissing his picture over and over and over again, kissing this picture. And the other kids in the car said, well, stop kissing your picture. That's weird. But like, what are you doing? He said, he said, I love Mr. Robert. He said, start kissing. He said, come on, that's weird. And he said, look, don't be telling me you don't kiss your dad. You know, and it was just this 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 experience that he had with a man who was loving him yeah. in his life. And it's just, you know, so desperate. We're so thankful in our tutoring program to have a good number of men. Jarvis's story was one that touched my heart. And yeah, I'll share sure. that with you as well. Yeah, that I really appreciate all those stories, Tim, because it, it shows me, at least, and, and I'm sure it shows First Presbyterian Church that what we do outside the wall, the friendly walls of, of our church building, which, you know, we haven't been in that much in the last year, but, but, uh, you know, what we do outside the, the, outside our own place is, I would say, just as, and even more important than what happens inside, because it's stories like that. It's people who are being transformed because of the love of another person, because of how we are created for community. We're created to love one another and to look out for one another and to provide opportunities for people to experience um, the dignity and agency that comes with being a child of God. And, and that is, that is, is um, an amazing gift you're giving and you're helping others to give it steps. So thank you so much for uh, all that you do and know that you are in First Presbyterian Church's prayers every day and um, throughout the mo this month of March, people will be giving to a book drive to support the Victory Life Reading Program, which is just such a gift. And education is one of our pillars of outreach ministry at First Pres. And, and we are just so uh, excited um, to have already engaged with you. I know our Presbyterian women helped out with the Christmas store this past year, and we're looking forward to all the ways uh, God is leading us together in the, into the future. So thank you, Tim, so much for all that you're doing and uh, blessings on your work. Thank you all. Thank you so much.